In Africa, the projected market volume is expected to reach 4.39 billion by end of 2024 in this industry. The market expansion, that's another reason behind the boom that we have been experiencing, especially in the post-COVID era. Most hosts adopt STR platforms because they want to do what? Better returns. Better returns. On average, the return on investment from the short-term rental, like when I put my home on an online platform, whether this is Booking.com, Airbnb, uh, Vibro, Expedia, is around 30% more than the traditional short-term rentals. That's on average globally. Increased demand. Why are we talking about increased demand? Demand is who? It's you and me, the guests. Why has the demand spiked so much? This is my favorite guy. He's the hipster. The middle-aged hipster. Right. Whether you are Gen Z, millennials or not, in the post-COVID era, travel, some of you are laughing. You can take a picture. Yes, he's my, he's my model, role model. So in the post-COVID era, people's trends on how they're traveling has changed dramatically. Let's see how. Especially after the post-COVID, after the COVID era, we've seen the rise of a phenomenon that is called staycation. What's your reason of stay? Staycation. What is staycation? So from the city, I go to an apartment within the same city, and I call that staycation. Why? You guys tell me. I don't know everything. Why? Because they want the change. They want the flexibility. They want just a different setting that uh, is affordable, but it's also a home, most probably. Automation, mobile bookings, huge, huge resurgence of technology. Even before COVID, imagine in 2018, 72% of bookings on booking.com came through mobile phones. That means people are booking on the go through their app. And right now, that percentage is even higher. All right, obviously, we're talking about mindful people that they are very mindful of their footprint, the carbon monoxide footprint on the environment, and that affects their choices, the choices that they make. They want to feel the experience not only inside the unit or the room, but also outside. And they want to live like a local. They want to feel that they create an impact in the local community. And they want to feel connected. And they want this authenticity. So we have the traveler. This is our platform. And this is one of our rooms. Unfortunately, um, Feda is in the other, in the other room. Um, this is one of our room at Capital M. So your host was created in 2017 in order to bridge the gap between the traveler who want the flexibility, who want their ease, they want the convenience, the value for money, and the homeowner who they want this increased return on investment and to manage their properties efficiently, but they don't have the time or the expertise. So my name is Eleni Georgiopoulou. I'm the founder of your host, and today we're gonna talk about the rise of AI in the short-term rental industry. These are many OTAs, right? These are many OTAs. That's what technology is all about. How are you able to streamline everything on the back end so you have one unified, everyone who comes from hospitality, you guys know that better than me. 
right? And this is a lot of noise. So I'm just going to talk from experience here. What was the all-rounded solution that your host brought to the table in 2017? We wanted to have a full-service booking engine. No matter which OTA you want to book from, it didn't matter, right? So we wanted to, book, to unify the booking engine and the experience from guests. Whether you book, I, I say that to my team at the office, whether you're Elon Musk and you book from the moon, remember I say that at the office, or you are in the States and you want to book from Airbnb, it doesn't matter. The experience needs to be the same. It has to be the same and it has to be automated with a click of a button. Your confirmation needs to be automated. Revenue optimization. Right, that was the first and very shy investment that we made in AI with smart pricing tools, uh, and especially after 2020, 2021, that has become an incredibly useful tool that's completely AI driven. Uh, usually price optimization for all of us who are dealing with hospitality and nightly rates, in order for you to be able to fill in the gaps and increase your occupancy, you need to be playing with the rates every single day, sometimes twice a day. It's like an airline. How do you do that with so many different OTAs? How do you do that with so many different homes? Right now we're managing like more than 150 homes. It's crazy if you think about it, but you have to find the solution. The solution for us is technology. We were able to maximize occupancy. We were able to also automate benchmarking, right, in terms of, of rates and pricing. Guest communication, 24-7 guest messaging. Automations were for confirmation and, and the basic tasks. And other than that, we have our customer support. These are human beings, 3D. Right? Okay. Uh, that's a 24 7 operation. Reporting and analysis, again, on a monthly basis, we do report to our homeowners on a, in a very transparent way. We, uh, technology, again, helps us with transparency because every single owner that is part of our uh, clientele. They're able to see real time all the bookings 24 seven. However, at the end of the month and where we need to compile all those reports, our finance team, I'm telling you, there's still so many manual tasks that we needed to do. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this to say that the road to automation and optimization and efficiency is not laid down with roses. We've experienced a lot of, of setbacks. In terms of the revenue management, many times we had to intervene and we still intervene uh, manually. Uh, inter inventory management, how to track damages and refunds, how to become manually and very, very time consuming, sometimes with the effect of not being able to get the refunds on time. That is time and money loss. Maintenance, manual upkeeping, coordination of repairs to ensure quality. Again, waste of resources that could be used somewhere else and make our guests smiling more often. Noise control. Parties, fraud, stolen credit cards, right? We invested heavily in AI to be able to overcome all those challenges. Our revenue management right now and yield management 
it's almost automated, of course, with the daily, daily, daily data feeding from the team. That has led from the 30% on average return on investment to around 100% increase for our homeowners. Preventative maintenance, smart homes, smart locks, noise control with noise detector, right? You have a party in the house, we can see it on our laptop, done. Online check-in and instant ID verification, I'm very proud of that. Online check-in, we had that, that's tech. But what the algorithms do, you upload your ID and immediately we know if it's a fake ID or not. We know, most probably, not with 100% efficiency, if you have been a bad guest, globally. And that's the power of AI. Inventory management systems and smart home technology, we talked about that, but also how we optimizing efficiencies in terms, of, um, in terms of our housekeeping team and the time that it takes for them, transparency, all of that. Um, uh, we can talk about this later if you want to know more. So how does the future look like? The real future, the near, near time future. We have chat box. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I don't want my guests to be talking to a chat box. But I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about the day that AI, those algorithms, know our preferences. They have the problem-solving capacity and ability to do things better. Am I in favor of this? I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you what's going to happen. Smart home automations, voice commands for control lighting, temperature, entertainment, virtual reality tools, online for better booking selection, recommendations for local attraction, I go into my room and I want to go somewhere in the next day and I ask on the chat and I get a full itinerary. And this is happening even now, by the way. Of course, of course, we need to be mindful of data privacy and something else that I'd like to focus on, not now, but later on in the discussions that we may have, is the skill set. You need specific skill set and human talent to be able to operate these machines. I present to you, Yorgos. I gave him a Greek name because I'm Greek. He is your virtual butler. Imagine in 10 years from now, you book online and then the meet and greet happens by Yorgos. Yorgos will see you through, will do your cleaning, concierge services, everything. Is this something that is gonna happen now? Absolutely not. Don't get scared. But I think my, I would like to, to finish with a key takeaway on AI. Humans are not obsolete, but we need to leverage on the one quality that we have, and that is us being human. Human. That means if we're able to use AI to delegate all the noise, the repetition, the tasks that make our people say, I hate my job. And we invest in training, upskilling, reskilling that talent that we have. As employers and as team leaders, and we proactively identify those skills that they will need to thrive in the world of AI, then we're talking business. So whether we like it or not, AI is not the future, it's the present. Thank you very much.